Today, I wanna to share with you a technique I've been using to keep my data in sync after mutations. And it doesn't involve uh, manually refetching queries, and it also doesn't involve manipulating a client-side cache. So let's get right into it, and I'll show you this app that we're gonna be working with. This is a little demo app. It shows people here, and we see we can click on people and kind of see some events associated with them. So that's about all it does with the exception of this little button right here. And uh, this is the button that's going to create an event. Right now, we see it just logs kind of the person ID and is running this function right here, which currently does nothing. So to kind of illustrate the problem that this technique solves, let's go ahead and just paste in some code that actually creates the event right here. Now we should be able to come over here, click plus, and we'll actually see our 201 request went out. But our UI is not updating right now, and that's because we didn't refetch any of the data. Now, this library that I'm using, SWR, does some revalidation after a certain time interval or certain events happen. So if I actually focus this console and then refocus this window, we'll see our new event just showed up. And again, that's all thanks to SWR. Right here, we can see the call that's going out to fetch uh, this pane right here. This is kind of uh, the component responsible for just that part, the person component, and it's fetching the data right here and rendering it. This is gonna revalidate every so often or when we refocus, that's why we saw the new data right there. And then we also saw this one show up right here. And if I pop open my sidebar and go to the root app component here, we're gonna see down in our app component we're also using SWR right here to get all the people and the number of their events. So both of those calls refetched uh, kind of randomly, but of course we would like more control. Ideally, we would wanna refetch uh, Beverly's data right here, right after we create this so we can update the UI. Well, SWR returns a mutate function from this, which we can use to do just that. That's basically going to revalidate the data uh, for this key right here. So after we create the event, we could just solve this by saying await mutate, just like that. And now when we come over here and hit plus, we'll see the new event show up right here. So that's a pretty easy solution to this problem. The only uh, issue is that we still see stale data right here. And again, if I come here and then refocus, we'll see that updates to three. Now, how might we solve that issue? Well, if we come back up to the app component, and again, this is a next app where this component kind of sits above the people component in the hierarchy, we can see that we're using the data uh, right here. And so maybe we could try to grab this hooks mutate function, come down to our page component. We could do something like refetch and then pass this through you know, we could basically prop drill this down to our page component right here, refetch, and then do something like await refetch right there. But obviously, uh, if you've worked with systems like this, uh, you can see that uh, prop drilling like this is going to get uh, pretty unmaintainable pretty quick. It creates, you know, pretty strong coupling between this particular call to use SWR in our app component and the page component. And if any of those change, we're going to have to update the other one. So that's not really a good solution either. Now, there's a second approach to this, which is instead of using this bound mutate function right here, which just corresponds to this one data query, we can import mutate globally from SWR. And then what we do is pass in the key for whatever query we're using to invalidate that and refetch it. So I can just throw this key in right here, save it, and we should have exactly the same behavior as before. So if I come over here to Clinton, hit plus, we're gonna see the new event right here. We still don't see it right here. But because this is the global mutate, we could also do await mutate like this, pop over to app, see that we're using this key right here. Go ahead and invalidate that one as well. And now if we start on a fresh person and hit plus, there we see the event and we see the one show up. Uh, these are happening in serial right now, so uh, there's kind of a delay. We could just use promise.all 
to pass these in and make them parallel, which would improve this a little bit. Let's come to a new person, hit plus, and now we see the one and the new event happening kind of together. So this is kind of the experience that we want, and we're not prop drilling anything explicitly from the app component to this page component, so that's better, but we still do have an implicit coupling right here uh, between this function in this page component and the particular query that is in our app component. So if this were to change, we'd have to come here and everywhere else that's making a mutation and update this. If we add a new query here or anywhere else, we need to make sure that this mutation also mutates those keys. So even though we're not prop drilling, we haven't solved the coupling problem yet. So this is also not gonna be what we want to do. Now, what we would really wanna do ideally is uh, basically have a function that revalidates all of our live queries. What if we had a single function that could just know we have one query out right now to people slash three and another one out to people and go ahead and manually rerun those right after we make this mutation? Well, that's exactly what we're going to do right now. I'm going to get rid of this mutate import. We don't need this anymore. And let's pop back over to our app component. I'm just going to come down here to the bottom and say function revalidate live queries. Now, in order to revalidate live queries, we need two things. First, we need to know which queries are actually live because, you know, as we click around this app, we see we're making lots of different network requests and we don't want to refetch all of those things. We just care about the ones that are currently being rendered. So we need to know which queries are live and then we need to go ahead and revalidate them. So in order to track these live queries, we're going to use a middleware from SWR. And again, SWR is this data fetching library I'm using, but this concept I'm talking about really applies to any data fetching library. It's just a way to solve this problem of having stale data after a server side mutation. But in our case, uh, we're gonna come up here and see that SWR config, which is kind of our context that we're using to set global values, uh, can take this use property and this takes in some middleware. So we're gonna write a new middleware called track live queries. And we can just write this right down here. And I'll paste in kind of the skeleton version of a middleware in SWR. It's a function that looks like this. We see we get the key, which again corresponds to, you know, in this case, API people, in our other case, API people slash 10 or whatever route we're on. And then it gets some other stuff, gives us the normal SWR, and then keeps going. So this is kind of where we get to do some new logic right here. And the really cool thing about these middlewares is that uh, this is a hook. You can see it says use SWR next, and that's because it's running in the context of a React component. So right here, we can use any other React hooks we want, like use state or use effect. And that's exactly how we're going to track which components are actually live. So to store these live queries, let's create a new variable called live queries. And we're actually gonna use a set for this. And our basic strategy is gonna be when a component mounts, we're gonna go ahead and push that query into this set. And when it unmounts, we'll go ahead and delete it. So we can use an effect for this. This will run when the component mounts right here, live queries, and we'll go ahead and add our key to this set. We only really need the key because that is what is already unique across each one of these queries. And then we'll return a cleanup function, which calls live queries dot delete the key. And we can see we want to add key right here so that this runs whenever the key changes which is actually exactly what's gonna happen as we navigate around pages right here. So this should give us a set at any time with all of the live queries in it for a given render of our application. And just as kind of a smell test here, we can go ahead and log live queries just so we get some feedback. And once we refresh here, uh, we can see we have the current live queries for this page. 
And uh, as we move around, you know, that thing is not growing. So our cleanup seems to be working. And if we go to the index page here and refresh, there we see we only have the root query because we don't have a person chosen. So this seems to be working great. Now we have this simple set with all of our live queries. And to revalidate them, it's as simple as doing what we did before, where we can import the global mutate function from SWR and then iterate each key in our live query set and pass it into mutate. So live queries is a set. It has a dot values property, and we can actually spread that into an array to get an array from those values. And then we can go ahead and map over each one of these keys and call mutate key, just like we were doing earlier manually. Now let's go ahead and export this function. Come back to our person page and we'll import it just like this. And now let's give this a shot. Add an event. Look at that. We just called revalidate live queries after the mutation and both queries are updating, but we're not sending out a bunch of unnecessary requests. We're not having to keep track of which ones are live. Now, the only thing is the spinner is stopping before the new data has come back. So to wrap this up, we want this to actually be an async function. Since we're mapping over these into the call to mutate, this is going to be a bunch of promises. So we can return promise.all promises just like that. And now back in our event handler, we should be able to await this. And this will only finish once every live query has finished revalidating. Let's give it a shot. There it is. Now the spinner keeps going from the perspective of this component. Uh, this add event handler is finished only once the live queries are done. And we can see there is no coupling introduced at all, uh, implicit or explicit, between our app component and this page component. And we didn't even have to change uh, the signature or the call to anywhere we're using use SWR thanks to the middleware system where we just get to say track live queries go ahead throw it in the global config right here using this use property uh, and this is pretty cool this gives us all of the currently rendered queries that are being used and uh, when i press plus here everything's up to date i'm not having to manage any cache or manipulate any cache i'm not having to thread anything down so uh, i this is really cool and i was really impressed with how easy this approach was using this middleware system. Now, one last kind of cool thing I wanted to show you is I take this one step farther in my app. And basically, I don't even want to have to import this and call this every time I run an event handler. What I really want to do is something like uh, you'll see in other data fetching libraries where you can use a mutation. Maybe we pass in uh, the endpoint that we post to. This gives us a create event async function. And then right here, I can just await create event and then I can pass in my data right here something like this and it takes care of the rest so this is actually uh, quite easy to write function use mutation and this is going to return a function this takes in some data and then it basically does all of this stuff right here we stringify the data. We return this, which is an async function. And then we replace this with a key. Let's refresh, close this off, give it a shot. Pretty cool. You can throw this into your hooks directory. And look, now from the perspective of this component, we get to use mutation, call this function, and all of this logic is wrapped up in here. It's just importing this revalidate live queries, and our UI is kept up to date. So again, I know we went through that uh, implementation with SWR, but if you're not using SWR, you know, if you're using any of the other data fetching libraries out there, React Query, Apollo, anything like that, I still think this technique is a really good first way to approach new mutations in your app. You know, client-side caches obviously are important. They're being used right here. You can see 
if you visit a user and then go back, uh, it's instant because SWR is using that cache. And these libraries also expose ways to manage the cache. So a lot of times after you create an event, you'll take the return data and say, oh, well, we know we have a new event for Beverly. Let's just go find her cache, slot it right in, and then you'll have the update. But I've worked with client-side caches in lots of different technologies for many years. And while they are powerful, they do add a lot of complexity. It's hard for developers to always use them correctly or understand how they work correctly, even if you have experience with them because they're just complex. Sometimes you have to do merges with data coming in. Sometimes you are creating new client-side data and then you refetch new data from the server. You have to deal with that situation. This is really a pragmatic approach I see. It works for any mutation. I can add a form component anywhere in my app. I can move it to a modal window. I have no prop drilling tying any of the data that's coming from an ancestor down to it. It's just going to send a mutation to the server. It's like fire and forget. And then any query that is currently rendered to the screen, you know, because data mutations tend to change the data that we see in the screen, we're just going to refetch all these uh, endpoints anyways. And the way these libraries, these more modern libraries w work today, you know, SWR stands for stale while revalidate. So the whole mental model of SWR is that data often becomes stale over time, whether you're making a mutation or not. So let's just periodically revalidate them. And that's why you see here, if you look at your network logs, you're going to see these uh, queries being refetched when we refocus the window after it's been five minutes, all that sort of thing. So the cost of running these queries again after a client side mutation, like clicking this button right here, is already so low. These queries are already being refetched all the time anyways. And I just love that this keeps this isolated. I can refactor this component any way I want. I don't care, it's not gonna affect anything. This hook is completely isolated and I can come here and change anything I want to about uh, this query or add more queries. Again, it's all just gonna work. So uh, I really love this idea of revalidating live queries uh, after any data mutation. Uh, I love how easy the middleware API made it in SWR, and uh, that was the main thing that I wanted to share with you in this video. So if you have any thoughts uh, or questions, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. And I'll put this demo up on GitHub and you can find the link in the description. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.